Hi, this is John Allen Green, Franciscan Hermit from Johannesburg, with my weekly podcast. The Prophet Tells a Story When I was a small child, I was in horrendously abusive circumstance. The primary abuser was my adoptive mother, who hated my very presence. Yet, I developed a custom that I performed every year on the 1st of May. I would rise at dawn and sneak out of the house with a little straw basket. Crossing the dew-dampened fields, I walked down the hill to the swampy wilderness, where grew delicate and fragrant early spring wildflowers. Wandering among them, I picked the most beautiful flowers I could find, and with my heart singing with joy, I filled the basket with the flowers gathered with my deepest love. Then, basket brimming over with all the colors of the rainbow, I would skip with the awakening bird songs back to the house of my pain, and I left that sweet basket on the doorstep with a prayer for the light of love to find the heart of the woman who hurt me daily in degrading ways. As I quietly sneaked off to bed, for all gifts are best when they are left in complete secret, I prayed that she would know a smile in the beauty of the gift as she opened the door to rush out to work. If a small child knows so deeply the power of redemptive love of their greatest abuser, then it seems those who have suffered only the ordinary buffeting of the world of form could try much harder to learn the path of love's redemption. Belief, faith, practice, and the greatest of these is practice. Let us strive to be the sun that awakens the flowers of love in the hearts of all around us, and most especially those who hurt us. Amen. Without the choice of our birth or of our death, all our grand posturing is just an illusion of free will that fills the pages in between the books of our lives. This is the type of philosophy that leaves inexorably into the grey zone of, well, why bother? This is the greyness that enfolds us all in the arms of despair at one or other times in our lives. How can we find our way back to awe? How can we find our way back to amazement as we prepare the way for the little child Jesus coming to us in total innocence and independence? This little child Jesus is the blueprint for all life and for every life. This is God coming to us and showing us who we are. If this child Jesus is holy, so also is the life of every child, of all children. This is the hope that stirs in our hearts as we gaze into the eyes of a little child. This is the same hope that raises us from the ashes as we witness two young people saying to each other, You are important, and I want to share my life with you. No, this does not mean that we are naive, that we are unaware of the evil that exists not only in the world, but also in my own heart. For we create our idols, and then delight in the destruction of our gods, as if to say, See, here am I, this is me, and I have done this. For evil must always hide behind a half-truth. The half-truth is a whole truth, subverting the power of good towards its own lack of substance, its lack of depth, and its lack of force. All too often this becomes an addiction to the diversions of our ultimate calling and union with the source of life and love. It was the philosopher Blaise Pascal who suggested that humans are driven by a need for diversion. A life that's always time-pressed might seem a recipe for unhappiness, but in fact the opposite is true. Human beings, 
are much more miserable when they have nothing to do and plenty of time in which to do it. When we are inactive or slow down the pace in which we live, we can't help thinking of the features of our lives we would rather forget. Above all, the fact that I am going to die. By being always on the move and never leaving myself without distraction, I can avoid such disturbing thoughts. As we continue our preparations in this Advent for Christmas and the coming New Year, let us challenge ourselves to eliminate these distractions. Let us not allow the stress of the Christmas season to distract us, for, distract us from what really is important. Let us endeavour to spend more time with our loved ones, our family and our friends, and less time on the, at the shopping malls and on our phones. Let us spend time to reflect on the past year. Let us notice God's hand at work in our life. Perhaps you, like many, have faced financial difficulty, or maybe you've escaped danger or disease through an unforeseen miracle. Perhaps this year has been a time of suffering or relationship disasters. Perhaps you have had to stare death in the eyes. How has God carried me through all these things? Let us remember the words of Joseph in the Old Testament. You planned evil against me. God planned it for good. May the Lord grant you his peace.